If you've got a Bible with you, electronic or real, uh, turn to John 1. That would be awesome. I know last week uh, Pete started us off in a series in Acts. This is a kind of step to one side, but it's actually kind of springboarding from the, one of the verses that he referred to last week. But anyway, um, what I want to do before I get into that is talk about uh, quickly, again, the um, God Loves You tour, which is coming to Wellington middle of next month. If we can have that slide up, that will be awesome. Thank you. And uh, so that's in the TSB arena. Um, so um, many of you would remember from the past Billy Graham, a great evangelist that God has used around the world. Franklin Graham is his son. And uh, by all accounts, he preaches the same as his dad and has an anointing on him. And he's gone around the world and he's coming to New Zealand. And uh, so he's coming uh, on the Wednesday, the 16th of November to TSB Arena. And this is an amazing opportunity for the churches around New Zealand, and certainly this date for the churches around the Wellington region, to invite friends, to bring friends, to bus friends in, to bring a carload of friends, so that they have an opportunity to encounter the God who loves them. Many people have different views about God, but if they knew, if they only knew what we've tasted of God, how good God is, they want to get there. So before I get into my preach, I would hopefully be able to watch the video, just a minute video of God Loves You tour, and then we'll speak into that. How are we doing? Should we do something else while we're waiting for that? Almost there. By the way, my preaching time hasn't started yet. (laughs) Just want to get that out there. (laughs) I heard you, Becca. (laughs) <laughs> heckling from the back. that God loves you. I want you to know tonight, you can have a new beginning tonight. All of us have a vacuum, an emptiness that only God can fill himself. We've got more opportunity today than we've ever had to make the impact of Christ felt in every phase of life. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, the, in, in Acts 1, uh, or Acts 2, no, Acts 1, where Jesus, um, Pete referred to this last week about the Holy Spirit uh, coming, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we want to be people who respond to that and say we want to be a people of the power of the Spirit. The very next sentence in that where Jesus says that you will receive the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. The very next verse uh, says this. It says, and you will be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, Samaria, you know, all around the world. And clearly the, the power of the Holy Spirit primarily is to embolden people. If you look at the disciples before the day of Pentecost, they were pretty shy. If you look at them afterwards, 
you've got like Peter on the day of Pentecost bold as anything. So anyway, uh, so I'm not talking from the book of Acts, but just bear that in mind. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in a great awakening, not just based on one event, but we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that through us, through the God's people, people can hear the good news and come to Christ. So what I want to talk about today is introducing a friend to Jesus. The last time that um, I spoke, I spoke on uh, Peter and Peter's call being caught up into the Great Commission, as it were. And Jesus said to him, uh, from now on, you will fish for people. And uh, what I want to do today is not talk from Peter's perspective. I want to talk about a different way from Andrew's perspective. Andrew was Peter's brother. So let's read in John 1. Uh, from verse 35. The following day, John, that's John the Baptist, not John the disciple. John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John the Baptist looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked round and saw them following. What do you want? He asked. They replied, Rabbi, where, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, we've found the Messiah, which means the Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. So today I'm not talking about Peter so much. I want to look at Andrew, Andrew, Peter's brother. And we're going to see how Andrew always seems to be wanting to bring people to Jesus. That's what he does. And uh, we'll find out a bit more about him. And what I want to do is uh, find out to uh, help us discover how we can introduce people to Jesus too. You see, the truth is this. God loves to use ordinary people like you and me. He loves to use ordinary people to draw people to him, to bring others to Jesus. I don't know if you realise it, but Andrew... He's not a very well-known disciple, and I think you and I have more in common with Andrew than maybe some of the other disciples, or maybe just more than you think. Have you ever, for instance, have you ever encouraged someone with a kind word or a smile? Have you ever invited or brought a friend along to church or a special event in order that they can encounter the God who loves them. Have you ever offered to sit with someone quietly or maybe pray with someone when they're in the middle of a crisis? Have you ever brought or invited a friend to Alpha or on the Journeys course in order that they can discover for themselves the Jesus you talk about and the Jesus you know. Have you ever taken food round to a neighbour or a friend at a particular time when you knew that would bless them and you just did it to show kindness? Or could you see yourself doing any of those things? You see, when we do those sorts of things, we are sharing what we've got. We're sharing what we've received. It's like sowing seeds, giving away seeds. It's like doing what Andrew did, and we'll discover how Andrew did that sort of thing. You see, every time we do that, it's demonstrating God's love, or it's inviting people to experience God's love. You see, Andrew wasn't an upfront man like Peter. Peter we know is up front. He's there, he's in your face. Doesn't matter if he gets it wrong or not. 
His foot is often in his mouth, and Peter's like that. But Andrew was very different. He's not up front, but wherever and whenever we find him in Scripture, he's always bringing people to Jesus. That's what he loves to do. So what do we know about Andrew? Well, he appears a dozen or so times in the Gospels, sometimes just in general lists of the disciples. Doesn't tell you much about him at all. What we do know is Andrew was a fisherman. He was Simon Peter's brother. In fact, that's usually the way the poor guy's referred to. Simon Peter's brother. Now, perhaps he was a younger brother. Maybe that was. Or maybe if you were Simon Peter's brother, that's all you'd ever be because Simon's the one who comes in the room and everyone knows about Peter. But Andrew's his brother. Perhaps younger, perhaps quieter. As I say, he's listed among the 12 apostles uh, and disciples, and he was also invited to follow Jesus. So last time we looked at the calling of Peter to go and fish for people, Andrew was one of the fishermen too. He was invited to fish for people. He was invited to follow Jesus. When Jesus sent out the 12 disciples to preach the good news about the kingdom of God and heal the sick, Andrew was one of them. Now, he may not have been the upfront one, but he was part of the crowd. He saw people healed. He saw people come to Jesus. But he wasn't Peter. We first hear about Andrew, uh, but he was introduced to Jesus by John the Baptist. We read that in the passage. He's the first disciple who was introduced to Jesus. In fact, Andrew was already a disciple of John, John the Baptist. And uh, so he would hang on every word that John would say. And John said, he, he, I mean, you know about his preaching. He said, look, it's not about me. There's one coming after me who's far greater. He's the Messiah. He's the one that God sent. He's the one that God's sending. And so don't follow me, follow the one. And when Jesus then comes to be baptised by John, as we read in this passage, John said, points out and says, this is the Lamb of God. Look, this is the Lamb of God. This is the one who I was talking about. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, Andrew would have known back in the Old Testament, you sacrifice lambs and lambs in the Old Testament would cover sin. But... John was saying, this lamb of God, God's lamb, the, God, the lamb that God's provided, doesn't just cover sin, doesn't sweep it under the carpet, takes away the sin of the world. This lamb of God, this Messiah, this Jesus he was pointing to, he's the one who's going to deal with the issue of sin. You and I can be forgiven. You and I can come into a connection and relationship with the living God. It was good news. He said, this is the one we've been waiting for. Andrew straight away goes, right, you've told me about this one. Now you've shown me I'm going to follow Jesus. So he follows Jesus and he spends the rest of the day with Jesus. He hangs around Jesus. But from the point in his life when he's encountered Jesus, from that moment onwards, he's just wanting to let people know about Jesus. He may not be the greatest preacher. He didn't stand up on the day of Pentecost and preach the best message, but he loved to share one-on-one. -on -one. So the significant passages that you read about Andrew when he's not just Peter's brother, when he's not just one of the 12, there are three occasions that John records in his gospel where he is doing one-on-one -on -one and bringing people to Jesus. First one. Immediately he encounters Jesus, he goes and finds his brother and brings him to Jesus. He goes, I, I've found Jesus, I've found the Messiah, come and see, come and check him out for yourself. That's in John 1, the one we read. John 6 is the second occasion. We all heard of the feeding of the 5,000. Whose picnic was it? 
It was the boys' picnic, wasn't it? Do you remember the boy? Jesus took the boys' picnic, which was five loaves, two fish, or is it the other way around? Can never get those two. It might have been. Was it five loaves, two fish? Yeah. Not two loaves, five fish. No. Okay, it doesn't matter. It was, it was his lunch. Which of the disciples brought the boy to Jesus? It was Andrew. It was Andrew. He gets named in his own right. G he, Andrew brings the boy to Jesus. And then later on in chapter 12 of John, we read the third occasion where it's recorded. I don't know if you remember the story where there are two, I think there's a couple of Greek people come uh, and find the disciples. They want to meet Jesus. So they first of all come to Philip. I don't know why they go to Philip. It may be that Philip was a, a Greek name. And so they thought, well, let's, let's, you know, maybe it was a cultural connection. I don't know. What does Philip do? Oh, let's go, let's go and see what Andrew would do. So he takes them to Andrew and Andrew brings them to Jesus. Andrew's always wanting to bring people to Jesus. So what can we learn from Andrew? Because I think we can all be like him. There's three things I think we can learn from Andrew. And the first thing is this, the value of the one, the value of the individual. Jesus once told a story of the lost sheep. Remember that one? The shepherd has 99 sheep who are safe. So he leaves them and goes in search for the one. Jesus also told a story of a woman who had uh, 10 coins and uh, she lost one. And it, it wasn't like she was happy with the nine. She was like, I've got to have the one. I've got to find the one. And so she does her spring cleaning, whether it was a spring or not. She turns her house upside down until she finds the one. Because one person matters to God. People matter to God. He loves them. And Jesus came to restore, to save humanity to bridge the gap between God and the human race, the, the, the gap, the chasm caused by sin and rebellion. The Bible says this, why did God do it? Because God so loved the world. He so loved the world that he sent Jesus. Jesus went to the cross to open up a way for you and I and our friends to get to know Jesus. But you see, it's not just that God so loves the world and God loves humanity, and that's all very true, but each and every one of us need to respond to Jesus. We all need to individually come into a personal relationship with Jesus because everyone counts, everyone matters. And how do we do that? We do that by putting our faith and trust in Jesus. We do it by confessing our sin and the wrongdoing in our life and asking for his forgiveness. We do it by opening our heart to him and willingly follow him. And in doing that, each one can come to know Jesus. Each one can be forgiven. So the value of the one. The one mattered to Andrew. It did. He got God's heart. He realized one person matters. And so he would go after. So the first time he meets Jesus, he discovers who Jesus is, the Lamb of God, the one who's forgiven me, the one who's brought me into a relationship with God as my father. I'm going to go and tell someone. And he goes and grabs his brother. The first thing he did, in other words, it was a real priority for him. The one mattered to him. So he goes, he finds his brother Peter. He's always bringing people to Jesus because every person matters. And it's good to ask the question ourselves because the scriptures, would, um, the scriptures say that we're all involved in this. Ask ourselves these questions. How, how can I bring someone to Jesus? How can I help them in their journey towards coming into a relationship with God? What can I do 
to help them in those and provide those stepping stones for them. Well, if we carry on, maybe we'll find out a bit from Andrew. So first of all, he valued the one. The second thing is this. We can learn from Andrew the value of personal contact. Andrew is intentional. He's intentional. He sought people out. He finds Peter. He tells Peter about Jesus and then says, well, come and see for yourself. Check this out. See if, this is, see if he really is the Messiah for yourself. His approach is come and see. Check this out. Now, statistically, it's a fact. Most people come and respond to Jesus and start to follow Jesus because someone prayed for them, pursued them, invited them. And that's true of all of us here, I would imagine. Any of us who know Jesus, someone prayed for us, pursued us, and invited us to come and hear. Whether it was come and, uh, you know, come and hear a speaker, come to the, uh, the stadium, or whether it was come on an Alpha course or come on a Journeys course, someone invited you and me. Personal contact was so important. Like Andrew, we can be the link in the chain. We can be the one that just links somebody who's away from God right now and bring them towards a connection with God where they can come to know Jesus. That's the second lesson, the value of personal contact. The, the third lesson I think we can get from Andrew is the value of being you. The value of being who you are. Andrew was himself. He didn't try to be like his big brother. He didn't try to copy his big brother, who was a big personality. He was just true to himself. He was much more happy quietly influencing the ones and twos. He was much happier doing that and successful at it. And what he'd do is he would just tell them what's happened to him and invite them to check it out. You see, the reality is this. God wants to use you and me, whatever our personality, whatever our gifting, and he can use us. You look at the variety of the 12 disciples, a whole variety of people, Jesus uses them. He can use us. You don't have to morph into someone else. You can be yourself. And your story and your experience of Jesus matters. It counts. We had the first week of journeys uh, just this last week. And uh, one of the stories that was told was of a certain family illness. And uh, it was one of the family members was not going to make it through. And, and they shared about their faith in Jesus. Well, some of you would know that that touched some sore places in me. And I was able to share what Jesus is doing in me right now. I could say how Jesus is a rock. How Jesus is the one we can lean on. Jesus is the one, as we sang earlier, who actually, when it comes to the end of our life here, that's not the end of our life. It's actually the very start, it seems, of God's great plans for us. It's like suddenly, and so just, just seeing this, I was able to share some of my journey. Your story's important. When you go through stuff, and, it, and I have to say, maybe it's the stuff that you wish you didn't have to go through, the stuff you find of Jesus in those precious moments, that's the stuff you can share. That's the stuff you can share. I tell you, I've always loved Jesus, the minute he saved me, I've loved him ever since. I tell you, I love him more deeply now because I know that he walks with you. I know it. I knew it before. I now know it. Jesus walks with us and he's very close. You can be yourself and your story matters. Someone says, oh, oh, my story's not that important. It's so valuable because when Jesus changes your life, he changes your life. 
people need to hear that. It can help to point people to Jesus. You say, when someone's been through something, say, look, when I went through this, this is how I found it helpful for me. We can pass it on. So let's just bring it towards a sort of application, close sort of thing. So God loves to use ordinary people. He loves to do that. You don't have to be a Peter or Paul. You don't have to be that good to stand up in front of, you know, you don't have to be good enough to write part of the Bible. You don't have to, but you can be like Andrew. You can be on the guy who's comfortable with the ones or twos, working in private, just gently influencing people. We can all invite people to experience Jesus for themselves. And uh, just as we sort of wrap up, I just want to highlight the two things that we can do like almost immediately. We can, there's two opportunities to put some of this into practice, to be Andrew type believers. The first one is this, journeys, as I alluded to, uh, journeys, we've just started one in Carpety this week, just, just gone on Tuesday. Uh, it was wonderful at Mandy's place with Mandy's friend. And uh, I would love us and, uh, to, to uh, start a journeys here. Um, you know, some people have said to me over the last, in fact, I think it was two people last week said to me, when are we doing the next Alpha course? Well, journeys and Alpha, similar. And I'll talk about journeys because I don't think we've got time to do an Alpha this side of Christmas quite. But we can fit a journeys in. Journeys is a series of five videos. So you're really inviting your friend to come and watch a few videos and then talk about it. Um, they're videos where people tell their story, their journey, their experience of how when they hit certain things in life, it's their faith that helps them. God helps them through. And uh, journeys is pretty good. We ran one at uh, Delia Nesta's home as well a few years ago. Uh, and uh, anyway, it was... Um, let me just say this, actually. Yeah, we ran one at, you know, Carl and Chom, uh, they came on, an, on a journeys course. They were so struck by what was going on that they then came on an alpha course. And they came to know Jesus. And um, Carl was, um, he was telling me when he went on holiday to Oz one time, he bumped into a, a, an Aussie pastor in a cafe and just got talking about their journey and how they'd come to faith in Christ. And, and uh, so he turned to the Aussie pastor, as if you know Carl, you'd know he'd do this. And, uh, but he turned to him and says, so what are you doing in your church for people like me on the outside who know nothing about Jesus? Are you running Alpha? Are you running Journeys? And the pastor was like, well, well, well. he says, because you need to. The church needs to run stuff so that there's an open door for people to come to know Jesus. The church isn't a private club. That's why we do uh, things like journeys. Now, journeys uh, over five weeks starts off the first week is it asks the question, is there a spiritual side to me? And there are a few stories that go with that. The next week looks at, so if there's a God in heaven, what are they like? Good question. Another question asks is, does this faith thing work in real life? And there are some stories that go with it. And then the final one, I said there were five, I can't remember what that fourth one was, but the final one is this. How do I cross the line? In other words, and a lot of the stories are about how people came to that point where they thought, I'm starting to believe this stuff. How do I get into a relationship with Jesus? And it's people talking about all their fears about what it might mean to follow Jesus, how they might have to wear the sort of weird footwear and stuff like this and robes and, and, and all the fears that they had. They suddenly thought, actually, it's not about religion. It's about relationship. And they came into a relationship with Jesus. And so Journeys is a fantastic course. We've seen it used uh, several times, really, to lead people on their journey to discover Jesus. This week, um, Jackie and I were on a train uh, down to Wellington. Um, nice evening meal for a birthday and stuff like this. But listen, when we are on the train, I was aware we got on the train in Porirua. There were already people on the train who got on the train further up the track. As we went to Wellington, towards Wellington, we kept stopping at stations, most inconvenient. But other people wanted to start their journey. 
They didn't come to Porirua to start their journey. Why didn't they come to where I was? Because they weren't where I was at. They were where they were at. And they joined the journey at their starting point. And Journeys and Alpha is really good at letting people just start the journey where they start. And some of the first things that come out of people's mouths, you may think, really? But God's at work. God's at work. We let people, someone let me start my journey where I was at. I got on the train station at the point I was at. Same happened with you. We, we, we're filled with grace for people. Journeys is a great opportunity. Listen, with regard to journeys, this is the one opportunity we can, uh, this is one of the two opportunities I want to say about. Journeys, uh, do come and talk to me. Mandy chatted to me and I said, I'd love to help, I'd love to help. So we've got one going up there in journeys. I'd love to, I'd love to come and be part of that. It's gathering a few friends or maybe even just one friend around a screen, but if there's more than one of you want to do it, maybe we can gather together in a home somewhere, gather around a screen and just chat about, well, what do you think about those stories? Where are you at? What do you think? Um, I'd, talk to me about it. I'm very, very keen that we um, have another opportunity to put the net out and draw people to Jesus. So that's journeys. And then the second opportunity is as we started off with, and I don't know if you've still got that slide, the one that just says about the Wellington, the God Loves You tour. You can put that up now. But Franklin Graham coming to Wellington is another Andrew style opportunity. It so is. The TSB Arena, uh, 16th of November. It's an opportunity to invite people to hear the gospel proclaimed, to hear about a God who loves them. It may surprise people. It may be you've had a friend who's done Alpha in the past but never quite came through. Maybe they'll be really good to bring along. So that, as I say, this is an Andrew-style opportunity, a chance to bring a carload, bring a friend with you. Don't send them off down there. Bring them with you. Catch a train ride. Let's go. Let's go. And if you're available on that night, then this is an Andrew opportunity. What I'd like to do, I'd love us to pray in just a moment. Now, I have tapped a few people on the shoulder, some volunteers. Where are my volunteers? If you want to just come here, and uh, Luke, are you, yep, you're joining in as well, that's great. Thank you so much. These are invitations to God Loves You, and just take a bunch and then pass them along the rows, and I would say, I don't know how, it, just go and find some rows, pass them along and grab some, because we can all have an invitation. If you want one, two, that's fine. If you think, I want six, I want 10, that's fine. I asked for 100 for our church, they sent me 700. <laughs> so, yeah. so there's space, it's TSB Arena. And uh, as you're receiving these cards, just let God start to speak to you about who you might want to invite who you can invite. You can take a few spare ones, that's absolutely fine. Thank you so much, helpers. But I just want us to think about, because we're going to pray in a second, holding these cards, think about who God's laying on your heart. And it may surprise you as we start to pray, suddenly you'll be thinking of someone that you weren't thinking of before, or it may be someone who you always pray for. You so want God to break out in their life. So think of that person, and we're going to ask God to move in their lives over these coming weeks. You can also think about the same people for journeys. Just we'll pray that God helps us. We'll pray the Holy Spirit empowers us. You happy with that? Cool. Has everyone got? Yep. And there's plenty more. Like I say, we've got hundreds, uh, multiple hundreds. Okay, thanks guys. So, can we just, um, how are we doing? Are we all right? Everyone got? Okay, can, can we just stand and pray? Let's stand and pray. And we'll close with this. Man. Sometimes you just need to breathe in the good news of Jesus and realise how much he's impacted your life. Guys, we carry good news. We carry good news. Let's just pray now and just hold those cards and just as we pray, Father, I pray now in the name 
of Jesus, that you would pour out your spirit on us, your people. Father, fill us with your love. Fill us with your compassion. Fill us with boldness and courage. Open our eyes, Father, to see those that you are calling to yourself. Thank you. The, the scripture says you so loved the world that you sent Jesus. We've benefited. Now we want others to benefit. So, Father, I pray for every name that's been put on our hearts right now, those names that are so dear to our hearts. Father, you know them. We pray that you would work in our friends, in our colleagues, in our family members. Work in their hearts, we pray. Come upon them. Holy Spirit, come upon them. I pray you'd work in their lives and give us boldness to see opportunities and just step into those opportunities where we can say, well, why don't you come with me? Why don't you come with me? We can check this out together. Why don't you come alongside me? Father, I pray for that in Jesus' name. I ask you, as the video said, it's time for an awakening. This nation needs an awakening. And Father, we pray that if there were many Andrews going around sharing with ones and twos, this nation could change. This nation could change. So come on us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.